It's Tuesday, John. Tuesday, primary day. It's primary day, but maybe more important than that, for Lisa, who's on vacation out there, hopefully you're watching, it's fleece day. <laughs> the fleece is back. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so enjoy it down uh, at, on vacation. Exactly. And um, hope you're having fun. Uh, John, there's yeah. things happening here. Uh, pub theology is happening tonight. Uh, because we are a polling place and uh, it is primary day, we're actually going to meet in the south uh, circle by the south entrance. Uh, they are using the kind of north side as you come in the parking lot for parking and, and shuffling people in and out. So we're going to meet in a little bit different spot than we normally do. So south entrance, south circle, uh, 6 to 7.30 tonight. Uh, please bring a chair, bring yourself, and bring whatever you'd like to eat and drink. Yeah, and just be careful because there is a lot of traffic coming in and going out. Yeah. Because it is primary time. It come, it waxes and wanes. Yeah. But it'll be after work, so there will probably be, you know. A couple more people than there are right now. Yeah, so just be careful as you're driving in. Come in slow and drive. By the time you're done, they'll, yeah. they'll be closed. But, Should be good. Yeah, but uh, just be careful there. And anything else? Yeah, small, um, small groups. Uh, we are resuming our programming for the year. We're doing Acts of the Apostles for the entire year, fall and spring semester. Uh, there is a sign-up genius if you'd like to participate. Uh, because we are using Zoom for this first semester, hopefully just for the first semester. Uh, so if you have not signed up, please do. We'd be happy to have you. I was thinking also, I emailed out this morning, John, um, a survey. Um, Stephen and Lauren um, had the right. idea of doing a Christmas cantata that was socially distanced. Since we're really not going to get people together for a Christmas cantata, and mm -hmm. choir really isn't singing right now anyway. That's... Uh, kind of one of those taboo things. And yeah. there'd be so much rehearsing through the fall for it. Uh, they just can't do it. And so, um, but Stephen and Lauren have figured out a way to do a socially distanced recording um, so that um, we can kind of blend all the voices together. They're going to produce a CD mm -hmm. and uh, put it out there. Um, we need to know whether or not people are interested in purchasing that CD because there's production costs and everything. And yeah. Anything we collect over the production costs will give the family promise to be sure. But we sent that survey out, and you might be thinking, I'll, I'll get to it at some point. Don't. Please let us know sooner rather than later. This takes lead time for Stephen and Lauren. Um, so we need to know within the next, really, week, week and a half. Yeah. So please, 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 if you get that email, it literally takes 60 seconds. Yep, did mine this morning. And that's and that's on a slow computer. So it just asks you like three, four questions. Yep, great Christmas gift. Great to just have because yeah. I've lost track of how many times people ask us if we record yeah. the cantata. Did you record the cantata? Yeah. So, yeah, and super excited and really genius. Yeah, great way, idea way to by go Stephen about and Lauren. It. <laughs> yeah, great idea by Stephen and Lauren. And I, I think by the time we hit Christmas, we're going to want a Christmas cantata. Absolutely. You know, whether you attend them regularly or don't. It, the choir just sounds spectacular. It's incredible. So, anyway, so that that's out there. Please uh, answer that survey, and then um, you know you can go on with your day. Um, so John and I uh, had our own idea today, and that was to go against what we said yesterday. Mm -hmm. so Change the script. We're gonna flip it up a little bit. Um, it's Romans Day. Romans Day. It's not just Fleece Day and Primary Day. It's Romans Day. It's Romans Day too. So uh, we're going to be doing Romans 14, 1 to 12. John did not preach on this on Sunday. So this is our first go on, on Romans 14. So here we go. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak only eat vegetables. No judgment on vegetarians. Um, those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, Eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves. We do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. 
So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord, John. Thanks be to God. So, um, so John, we're still in that section, that end part of Romans. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of his folksy wisdom being given out there. Yeah. And I think it really, oddly enough, I think this is a really good message for a primary day. Where, or general election day. Exactly. Because um, really, you know, I talked a little bit in my sermon that, that Jesus is kind of on the kick the last two weeks of, of communal living. And, you know, in the lectionary, the, the readings that are assigned for a given Sunday are usually grouped thematically. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes sense that this reading from Romans is lumped with, you know, Matthew 18 about forgiving the sins of your brother and sister and the parable of the the king and the talents. Um, this is really Paul saying to his Roman church of, you know, Roman Jews or Gentile Christians, uh, basically quit poking each other. Like for the love of all that is holy, just live together. Right. Stop being worried about what's going on over here and stop being worried about what's going on over here. Like, People are accountable for their own choices. We aren't, you know, you know, we aren't a homogenous group of people. It's okay. The body of Christ is supposed to be diverse, so don't worry about what Joe's eating over there, and you know, don't worry about how you know Larry's conducting himself over here. Just be. Yeah, and I think that was that was their that was their big issue, and you can read Galatians and read all about the eating. Mm -hmm. Stuff where I guess Galatians was the circumcision stuff, mm -hmm. um, but the, these are the different food traditions and whatnot that he, one is criticizing the other about. But I thought the statement that was really powerful in this, um, and I heard it in a different way because um, I read that verse a lot in funerals, like when we're graveside. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, uh, when we're graveside. It's one of the options of kind of the scripture to start the graveside committal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it reads like this. And, and when you hear it, you'll understand why it's read there. But it, it hit me in a different way, John. I, I knew it was from Romans, but I guess I just didn't know that it was right here. Right here in this part. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. And, and I, I just, it really struck me, John, because there's a self-righteousness that goes on on either side of our political spectrum right now. And there's a sense in which one side looks at the other as heathens, sinful, um, however you look at it, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're on the right, you're looking at the left saying, gosh, you know, all the abortions they want, or that, that's, that's or all. For how do we, how are we going to pay for all of your programming? Right. And on the left, we're sitting back saying, you know, well, how can you let the poor just starve? like that, you know, when, you know, you don't want to fund social programs and everything. And there's a sense, in, a sense in which one side is constantly demonizing the other. And there is a sense in which, and Paul says it, we will stand before the judgment seat of God. The question isn't whether or not one side is more holy or one side is more righteous or one side is more sinful than the other. And I think we lose sight of that. Um, and I think Paul calls us out on that, you know, and calls us out to be able to say, 
you know, as you said, John, we're called to live in a community together. And we're going to have these disagreements. But that doesn't mean that just because I'm on this side of an issue and you're on this side, that God stands with you and not with me. Or not yeah. with you and with me. God dwells with all. Yeah. And, and really, God stands in the middle and has hands out on both sides saying, come on back, come come be with me in the middle yeah, where you're supposed to be. Yeah, I like that, be. John. And it's... I like that. I think it's, it's frustrating. Um, and I think, Paul, you kind of get this frustration on Paul's part of going, you're missing the point. You are spending so much time arguing about whose practices we we keep or we we you know authorize as gospel and and you know orthodox versus doing the actual mission of caring for each other Mm -hmm. you know we have you know roman church is a church that's held in common and is living together as a community set apart from the rest of the world and if you're so busy wondering what people are doing in tent number 13 and you're in tent number 27 you're not going to care about the widows and the orphans that need your your food. Right. To, you know, it, it's really, I don't know, it's it's really frustrating to, to, to hear where Paul's talking about now and, and seeing where we are. The divide, I think, in both instances just keeps getting bigger. And while God stands in the middle of it, it's it's harder and harder for God to keep pulling. I mean, that's a lot of work to bring yeah. the body of Christ back together. Yeah. Yeah. I I just I I think it's important for us to um, because I think I think the other thing in the way you described it, John, is not only do we get farther from one another. But even in the self-righteousness of one side over the other, we get farther from God. I really like the way you describe that because I think God's just constantly trying to draw us in from the fridge from the fringes to just love one another. And I think that's a great message on a primary day. It's a great message on an election day. And I think it goes with the common theme this week of just How are we continuing to love and forgive one another so that we can live together? Yeah, and and work in the kingdom. The the kingdom does not have a political affiliation. The kingdom stands above that. Right. And there's work to be done. Yeah. Some judge one day to be better than another. Some people like rainy days, John. Some people don't. Some people like snow. I, I like snow. You better, Minnesota boy. Some people like snow. Some people don't. But it doesn't make one better than another. Some people like summer. Some people like... It, that's how petty we get with the whole thing. Um, some people are Republicans. Some people are Democrats. That's, that's choice. And God loves us all. And no matter where you sit in that spectrum, the thing that sits on top of all that is we're Christians first. Yeah. We're God's people first. So go vote, go pray, yeah. go love your neighbor. I'll pray us out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Gracious God, you wash us in the waters of baptism. And in washing us, you wash away all the things that keep us from you and keep us from one another. You wash away the sin of self-centeredness and selfishness and judgment that we heap upon other people. Help us to hold firm to the identity that you give us as your beloved children. Help us to see that in the people that we interact with, the people that we disagree with, and the people that we're called to work alongside of in the kingdom that you bring. Give us peace. Give us harmony. Help us to see that the work we're called to do stands above all the things that 
we question and we debate and we judge. Guide us by your spirit to see as you see and love as you love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Enjoy your day. It's beautiful. Yeah. Take care.